So a while back I posted a video on Lekuzner's Messer terminology and it got a pretty huge response and one of the things I found really interesting is that it sparked a discussion on Lekuzner and the martial tradition that he was part of. Let me present my thoughts on that. Hello there, and welcome back to the Virtual Vectula. My name is Oscar, and today I'll be going into Le Kuchner's martial tradition. What I'll be doing is I'll be talking a bit about the martial traditions that I think influence Le Kuchner's manuscript. But a word of warning before we go and do that, a lot of that is super speculative. There's a couple of things that we can ascertain with a reasonable degree of certainty, but most of it is speculation that really requires more in-depth research to find out whether that really is the case. So having said that, let's dive into it. The first and most obvious and biggest influence I think is of course the Yudlev manuscript. Yudlev wrote a gloss on Lichtenauer's Longsword Settle and is one of the canonical three um, glossators of the mid 15th century for that Lichtenauer Settle. But he also wrote a piece on Rosfechten and uh, Arnischfechten and others. So mounted fencing and armored fencing. Keep those in mind. Now, how can we tell that it's Jude Lev and not, for instance, Ringek or Pseudo Peter von Danzig? Well, that has to do with certain uh, quirks of Lekuchner that it has in common with Jude Lev. For one, there's a couple of plays that Jude Lev has, um, Lekuchner has them as well, and uh, Ringek and von Danzig don't. For instance, there's the Gehutstoss with the Tverhau and the Drusthau. However, there's also, and that's very amusing, there is a uh, scribal error in the play on the Kruphau and Becker that we find both in Yudlev and in Lekker. And it says that the Kruphau or Becker works against Eber and Unterhau. So what that's supposed to be is Ober and Unterhau, and so cuts from above and cuts from below. However, it gets translated to Eber and Unterhauen, which has led some people, and me included for some time, to believe that the Wecker is meant to work against the guard called Eber. Amusing, but this also gives us a really clear clue that uh, Lekuzner is based on the Yudlev manuscript. Now, that's of course not the only influence. Uh, in the second half of Lekuzner's uh, constant settle in Messer, we find a lot of influence uh, of what's likely uh, Gemeinfechten, or common fencing as it's known by a lot of people. However, it's really hard to define what this common fencing is actually, because it's never explicitly written down. We can get some glimpses of what it might have been by looking at the Glasgow Fechtbuch or Code of Wallerstein, but those are generally quite short and do not really give us a very clear picture of what this common Messer fencing tradition must have been. So we have an inkling of what this common Messer fencing tradition could have been based on Lekuchner, but in what way it influenced Lekuchner, um, through what way it was transmitted, uh, why he decided to include certain things and maybe not others, is currently unclear, and that requires a lot more research to figure out, if we will ever know you. Now, we have Jutlev and we have Gemeinfechten. What else? Well, Lekuchner also uses a lot of long point. And long point is not naturally something we see a lot in longsword. It's mentioned a couple of times, but the long point is explicitly worked with in a play like two times at the end of the manuscript, and, and that's about it. Lekuchner uses it almost all the time. It's one of his go-to plays for almost any situation. And the question is, where did he get that? And the answer is, I honestly don't know. I have a hunch. It might be Sword and Buckler, but. I have absolutely no proof of that, and I still need to experimentally work through that, and it might turn out to be a really bad hunch. I will just go and find out. Might be Sword and Doctor, or it might be something else completely. We just don't know. So there's that. There's also two other very uh, abusing influences, but we can both trace them back to the Yudlev manuscript. One of them is, of course, the armored fencing, and the other is mounted fencing. Now, when it comes to armor fencing, there's a couple of uh, explicit mentions of it in Lekuchner, um, two plays to be exact, and they both mention uh, Geharnischkampf, or armored fencing. 
And do keep in mind that generally in text the word Kampf tends to point to a judicial combat, but apart from that there is no other mention of it in the entire manuscript. So it might also be that Lechner just uses that word to refer to any sort of armoured fight. Hard to tell. However, there's a couple of armoured plays in it. Um, one of them even explicitly coming from Master Andreas, so uh, Anders Lignitzer, whose armoured fencing is also included in Udalev's manuscript. Apart from that, there's also a couple of plays that do not make much sense if you do them without armour. They're just too risky and uh, do not really get you anything that you couldn't get at a larger distance unless you were trying to do this in armour, in which case they would make a lot more sense. However, in those cases it's not made explicit, so it's really hard to tell as far as I'm concerned. Is that meant as an armour play? We don't know, but it could be. There's also some interesting influences from mountain fencing. Um, in that uh, context, we can, for instance, think about Auszaum, or unbridling, where the word Zaum is something that's used a lot in the mountain fencing, where, uh, as referring to bridles or reins. However, in Lechner's case, Auszaum is something you do when you get into a usually complicated pretzel with your opponent, and you just let go of your master to unpretzel yourself. So well, that's interesting when it comes to mountain fencing. But there's also a very um, interesting reference, which is the Taschenhauer. So in mountain fencing, there's a thing called the Taschenhauer, which means that generally you ride past someone, you try to stab them in the face, and if it doesn't work, you strike with a backslash and drive past them. Interestingly, Lechusner also has this play. In this case, it's not meant to uh, serve on horseback, but it will serve you in effect true, where you do exactly the same movement, but instead of hitting them on the backswing, you just slap them with the flat on their butt, where they might have a touch in a pouch. So, interestingly enough, we see a very similar movement in Andrei Pauenfeind as well. Uh, he has the Turkensuk, uh, once again a reference to the kind of strikes that Turkish horsemen would be making. And rather than this being a fun little factual play, this is a thing that will really mess up someone's hand. So Lechner consciously has made a choice to take something which could be used for a lethal effect, however he chose to make it into a fun thing. However, it has uh, its parallels in mounted fencing as well, which is interesting. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he just uh, was scrolling through the Lev manuscript and figured, hey, that's fun, I can try that with Messer as well. Once again, more research is required in this. Now, wrapping up, we can see uh, that there's a lot of influences for Lecker's manuscript. Most of them seem to come from Lev's uh, Longstrip manuscript with a couple of armoured and uh, mounted plays thrown in for a good measure as well. But there's also the question of to what extent did Lechner uh, tap into a common fencing tradition and what did he take from it? Um, and did he, uh, where does his long sword, uh, where do his long point plays actually come from? Those are interesting questions and I really uh, would like to keep digging and trying to find out more about that in the near future. If I find out anything, of course I'll let you know. Anyway, Thanks for watching this video so far. Thanks for listening to me ramble about something I find really interesting. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and place a comment if you have any questions. And I'd also like to use this opportunity to give a shout out to my patrons. Thanks a lot for supporting me guys. You will rock. Anyway, stay safe, keep fencing, and I'll catch you in the next one.